Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about peas. Yes, the vegetable peas. And if you were to poll most Americans, they probably would tell you that they not only despise peas, but they can't stand them. Um, and that they're probably their least favorite vegetable. Yet I'm growing them here and I'm giving them probably the most prime spot in my yard. And I grow them every year um, and I absolutely love them. But me, growing up, I hated peas. Uh, but if you know anything about peas, there's different types that you guys can grow. And I'm growing the sugar snap pea, which is, in my opinion, far superior to the other types of peas, and which is why I really, really love them. And I want to detail for you guys why I love them so much. Now, if you think about the different types, there's the, the pea pod or the snow pea which is commonly found in Asian cuisines and stir fries. And it's kind of just like the outer shell of the pea. It's not really uh, filled with peas just yet. They're quite small, almost non-existent. I don't really know anyone that's over the moon about pea pods or is saying um, that they really, really love them. Maybe there are some people out there. Uh, but for the most part, I think a lot of people can either you know, take them or, or leave them, right? There's also the shelling pea, which is normally dried or is shelled out of the out of the pea, out of the pod itself, and then is actually either frozen, like we eat with frozen peas, or they are then dried and then rehydrated at a later date to cook with. And for me, those are the, the peas that I think everybody thinks about in America as being the worst. Because if anyone's ever had frozen peas, they're just despicably bad. They're so bad. Um, so I had very low expectations going into growing these peas uh, my first year growing them. Um, however, I did some research and found that the sugar snap pea is very different than what your typical frozen pea is. And essentially this is the, the pod. So like a, a snow pea, it has the pod, but also within the pod is a fully grown pea um, that is very sweet, very juicy, very tasty. And it's almost not even really like eating a vegetable, I find. And here's the, here's the big key and the thing that I want to show you because I, I want to get you guys in closer here with these plants in a minute. But there are some, some pods in here. If I look very closely, there's some that are not very plump. They kind of look like somewhere between a sugar snap pea and a, a snow pea. And this is typically, I'm gonna pick some here. This is typically what you would find at the grocery store. And I know a lot of you guys like sugar snap peas at the grocery store, but the difference between what you can grow is just absolutely massive between what you get at the store. And the reason for that, you're gonna see in a moment, is that you can really let the peas expand and get to a bigger size. And for most fruits and most vegetables, if you pick them at the right time, they are so far superior in terms of their bricks and their sugar content and therefore they, to me, don't even taste like, uh, like vegetables. So I'm just trying to find a really good example here for you guys of some peas that are a bit further along. One that I would consider perfectly ripe. Maybe the quality you would find at the grocery store different stages of these peas so I can get a good representation here. All right, let's just go with these here. Uh, I think this will prove my point. So again, what we're looking for are very plump peas because believe it or not, the grocery store, <laughs> everything you get there, they don't pick it properly because they want to ship it and have it store for a very long time. So this is a pea that you would normally find, a sugar snap pea that you would find at the store. They look, they look pretty good. Um, you know, let's open this up here and see what we can see on the inside. Now there's not many strings on them, which is really nice. But you can see when I open this up, the peas are very small. So that's one factor of the, the sugar snap pea is that there's not many strings. You could just bite them like this and eat it like this fresh. You don't have to cook it but you can see how small these peas are. And as a result, they're really not all that sweet. They're really not all that tasty. 
it tastes more like a vegetable. The peas themselves are very good, but the pod is a bit lacking. So the next form, maybe something you would see at the grocery store or a bit, some bigger peas would be something like this. And now the pods or the peas have pretty much filled the entirety of the pod. And this is extremely sweet. It's like eating candy. The bricks on this, I don't know what it is, but the, the amount of sugar in here is quite exceptional. Crunchy, very juicy, very crisp. Honestly, one of the best vegetables that you can grow, in my opinion. And then we have something here, which might be a little bit further along. I'm not sure if I have one that's perfect. But there you go, even bigger, or a little bit smaller peas actually than the one we just ate. I have one more here to pick. So the longer, the, I guess the idea here, the message I wanna get across to you guys is that if you were to wait, just have some patience and grow them yourself, this is a totally different vegetable and it's so much better. They should probably be even more plump than these, actually. So this is really not the best representation. Um, you'll start to really see the, the pod start to bulge. Now, what I like about this one is that you can distinctly see the ridges in the peas. So the pod is not completely full, but you can definitely tell just by touching it or by looking at this, you can really see that the pod is full of peas. And therefore, I think they're a lot sweeter. And that's the big difference between the grocery store and growing them at home, is that you guys are getting unfortunately a bit robbed. So I'm gonna zoom in now on the plants because they're really not all that difficult to grow. It really starts in, in March, maybe even February, is that you guys can start these peas indoors. I do them in trays. We talked about seeding them. Uh, we have them in 128 cell trays. I do two peas per, per cell in the tray. And then I transplant them out this year with the help of this cold frame, giving them the best space possible. Um, a lot of warmth got them off to a really nice start and I'm now having harvest by um, as early as May 1st. So it's, uh, it really doesn't take all that long. At a certain day length, they start to flower. And uh, they get some nice size to them before that. And they are just off to the races at this point. Um, I, I space them very closely. I do two peas every four inches. So each cell has those. And the cells are really only about a half inch by a half inch in diameter. So there's two peas, half inch by half inch, spaced four inches apart. And then they start to form this like cluster, this carpet. They're very close together. They like growing close together because they, this is a variety called Sugar Ann, which is a very low growing variety. Doesn't need support. If you plant them next to each other, near each other, they support themselves. And that's, in my opinion, the best way to grow this particular variety, at least that I've seen and uh, they do really well. They're exceptionally vigorous and uh, they're very, very tasty. Now, the other thing you can do is actually use these for shoots. And you just basically prune off the tips of each individual plants. And these are really nice as like a microgreen in salads and different things like that. Whatever you would use a microgreen for, you want some extra crunch, you wanna put it on a salad and top it off. That's what these are for. And that, for everybody out there, is the sugar snap pea. So I wanna thank you guys here for sticking with me. I really do think you guys should grow this. I say it every year. I've been growing them now for years. They're a wonderful, wonderful vegetable to grow, but you can only do it in the spring, at least here in this climate, it seems. So get out there next year. It's unfortunate that this video happens every spring when uh, you know, it's too late, but I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll see everybody soon. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Subscribe, like the video, and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. See everybody soon.